Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. This video will cover two things. First we will see how to use the incremental encoder. And in the second half, we will use this encoder to control the positioning of the servo motor. By controlling the position, I mean the angle by which the servo rotates. So let's start with the encoder first. I have this encoder here, and it's rotary, as you can rotate the shaft. The shaft is free to rotate in either direction, as there is no limit on the rotation. It have 5 pins, but we are interested in the bottom 2 pins. The pin names do not justify their functions, so we will call the clock pin as pin A, and DT pin as pin B. The middle one is the switch, and it represents the push button on the shaft. That's it about the encoder, now let's see how it works. I got this GIF from the Wikipedia, and it shows exactly what happens. Think of the black region as ground, and white region as VCC. So it start with both the pins in contact with the white region, so both the pins are high. Now let's say we move the shaft clockwise. So the outer pin goes low, while the inner one is still high. Now the inner pin goes low, and both the pins are low. And now they are going back to high again. If we move it counterclockwise, the inner pin goes low first, then the outer one. And then they both goes back to high. This is the entire working. Basically, we just have to check which pin goes low first, and based on that we can figure out, whether the shaft moved clockwise or counterclockwise. Let's see one more time with the logic analyzer. Here I have connected the channels to the pin A, and pin B. Supply is 5 volts. Let's start this. Pay attention, I am rotating the shaft counterclockwise. Here we got the signal on both pins. Let's zoom in. We have some unwanted signals here, but we will take care of them in the code itself. Let's focus on the main part. As you can see here, the first pin goes low, and after some time, the second one goes low. Now I am rotating it in the other direction. This time the second one goes to low first, and after some time, the first one goes low. This is exactly what's shown in this animation. This is the entire working of this encoder, and we will use these pins to identify the direction of rotation. Let's create a project in Cube IDE. I am using F103C8. Give some name to the project and click finish. I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. Select serial wire debug. I have 8 MHz crystal, and I want the system to run at maximum 72 MHz. Let's select two input pins, which will be connected to the encoder. Click save to generate the project. Here first we will read the pin A. If this pin A is low, then we will check for pin B.
Actually I am considering this situation. When the pinner goes low, at the moment, pin B was already low. And if this happens, we will increment the counter. Now before incrementing this counter, we will wait for the pin B to go back to high. This is necessary to avoid those unwanted fluctuations. Also we need to do the same for pin A, as there are fluctuations in pin A also. So we will wait for the pin A to go high. As you can see, the pin goes low again, and it will change the counter value. So to avoid this, let's wait for some time before reading the pins again. Similarly, when the shaft is rotated in another direction, we will use the same code, with minor changes of course. This time we will check if the pin B is set. This is the part where pin A goes low, and at this particular time, if the pin B is high, that means the movement was different from the last time. Now we will wait for the pin B to go low. This is to avoid these fluctuations. Now when the pin B is low, we will decrease the counter. Then we will wait for the pin A to go high and then for the pin B. Let's say I want to restrict this counter value between 0 and 20. This should be integer. Let's debug it now. Note the counter value in the live expression. I am rotating in counterclockwise direction, and you can see the value is increasing. Now if I rotate in clockwise direction, the value starts decreasing. The value is limited between 0 to 20. So the encoder is working well, but I would like the value to increase in the clockwise direction. So I am changing the counter operation here. This is it about the encoder part, now we will use this encoder to control the movement of servo motor. I have already covered the servo motor a long time ago, and this is the tutorial for that. I am taking this as the reference for today's video. Servo motor works with the pulse width modulation, and like it's mentioned here that a pulse of 1 millisecond will move the motor to 0 degree angle. Then 1.5 millisecond pulse will move it to 90 degrees, and 2 milliseconds pulse will move it to 180 degrees. The pulse width needs to be 20 milliseconds, which translates to 50 Hz frequency. I have also mentioned that some motor works between 0.5 millisecond to 2.5 millisecond, 
and I have that kind. So first of all we will enable the PWM. I am using timer 1 channel 1 for the PWM output signal. You can see what the timer clocks are at 72 MHz. But if you want to know where the timer is connected, you can check the controller datasheet. Here you can see the timer 1 is connected to the APB2 clock. And if you see the clock setup, the APB2 timer clock is running at 72 MHz. Now we need to bring this clock down to 50 Hz. If we divide 72 MHz by 50 Hz, we get 1,440,000. We need to split this value between Prescaler, and the Auto Reload Register. I am using the Prescaler of 144, and Auto Reload of 10,000. Keep the Auto Reload value high, as this is where the percentage for the duty cycle will be calculated, so if we keep it high, the percentage values will be high, and hence more accurate. Let's save this to generate the project. Now like I said, the motor needs the pulse width between 0.5 milliseconds to 2.5 milliseconds. This means that the motor covers the angle of 180 degrees in the difference of 2 milliseconds. This would translate to 11.11 microseconds per degree rotation. Let's start the timer in PWM mode, with channel 1. We will limit the counter between 0 to 180, as per the servo rotation. Now we have 11.11 microseconds for 1 degree rotation, and the pulse width is 20 milliseconds. This is the duty cycle for one degree rotation. Let me explain this properly. In between 0.5 millisecond to 2.5 milliseconds, the motor covers 180 degrees. This means the motor will take 11.11 microseconds for one degree rotation. Again we have 20 milliseconds pulse width for the servo. So the percentage duty cycle for 1 degree rotation is 0.000555 and so on. This is the percentage from 100 obviously. But we have the auto reload of 10,000, and hence we will calculate the 0.000555% of 10,000. This will come around 5.55. This is the value, which corresponds to the same duty cycle, as 0.5 from 20. Let's define a variable to store the PWM value. Now we will multiply this value to the counter value. This will give us the duty cycle, corresponding to the counter value. 
And now we will feed this value to the capture compare register. I am using channel 1, and that's why CCR1. If you are using any other channel, use the respective capture compare register. There is one last thing. The motor timing starts from the 0.5 milliseconds. When the pulse width is 0.5, the motor will be at 0 degrees. So we need to also take this into consideration. The duty percentage for 0.5 is 0.025. Which in our case will become 250. So we will add this 250 to each of our PWM values. This will make sure that when the counter is zero, the motor must be supplied with 0.5 milliseconds pulse. And with the increment in the angle, the time will be added to this 0.5. This is the servo I am using. It's the SG90. It have three pins, the red and brown are for VCC and ground, and the yellow is for the signal. Let's debug it now. Check the counter value, as it is the angle by which the servo is rotating. Clockwise rotation is increasing the angle. It have reached 90, and the servo has also rotated by the same amount. Now we are at the maximum 180 degrees. If we reset the controller here, the counter will go back to zero, and the servo will go back to its original position. Clockwise rotation is increasing the angle. Counterclockwise rotation is decreasing the angle, and the servo is also rotating in the reverse direction. If you want to debug the registers, you can add the SFR. Here check the value of the CCR1 register. It's not changing in the real time, but if you refresh it, you can see the value. This is it for this tutorial. I hope things were clear. Before using the code, check the servo you are using, as it might not work within the 0.5 to 2.5 range. Most of the servo motors work between 1 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds range, so make sure to check this part. That's it for today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.